this episode of Get In Tune. I'm Michael Gracia, and today we're going to talk about creating characters for limited animation. Now before we get into talking about limited animation, let's discuss animation in general. Now in the old days, back when we had theatrical shorts, we're going back to the early 1900s, um, really became popular in the, in the late 20s and 30s, and ran until probably the the late 1950s, early 1960s in theaters. Now, in original animation back then, we used to take uh, photos by a camera, which we still can do technically on the computer, um, but it, wor you know, it works a little different by placing them on your timeline frame by frame. Um, but back then, we used to shoot... 24 frames a second. And that means there's 24 images for one second of animation. Now, if we were to multiply 24 times 60, you get 1,440. And that is how many pictures or shots with the camera are taken in one minute of animation. Now, back then, the average time was about seven minutes for a cartoon. So we're looking at 10,080 camera shots for seven minutes of animation. And down here we have um, Frank and Ollie, two of Disney's Nine Old Men, who actually basically wrote the book on the principles of animation. Uh, if you get to pick up The Illusion of Life, they are the artists who, who wrote it, and it is a great book, and I recommend it to everyone. Now, next... Sorry, I went a little too far. We have Gertie the, Gertie the Dinosaur. Now, there were cartoons or animated shorts done before Gertie, but Gertie was the first one to really become popular. It was done by Windsor McKay, a cartoonist at the time, back in 1914. Now, people experimented, and we had cartoons, and we got into the next big one was in 1928 with Mickey Mouse and Steamboat Willie. Um, Steamboat Willie made a huge leap for animation at the time because it was the first cartoon to connect sound and film together, whereas before, the sound was usually played within the theater. Someone maybe had some instruments, whether it was a piano or whatever, and they played along with the film. Now, cartoons got popular and more popular and became a great piece for um, to be in the theaters. People would go to the theaters sometimes just for the cartoons. And one of Disney's, if you want to call them competitors, was Warner Brothers and they created the Looney Tunes. The Looney Tunes, um, or not Looney Tunes, but Warner Brothers' main character, a big character at the time, was Porky Pig who then later we got introduced in uh, to Daffy Duck in Porky's Duck Hunt. Later on, all the characters developed, and Bugs Bunny became the most popular. Um, the time frame on here is the first run, complete run, of when um, the Looney Tunes appear. So from 1930, and the last one was made in 1969. They have been made others since then, but this was their first original run. Tom and Jerry is a very important cartoon because it was created by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera for MGM Studios. What's interesting about Tom and Jerry, they were the first cartoon to win an Oscar over Disney cartoons. Um, so they were a game changer. They were incredibly popular. And William Hanna and Joseph Barbera are someone we will talk about later. Another popular character was Woody Woodpecker of the time. It was created by Walter Lance and, and distributed by Universal Studios. He has been remade a few times. Um, still, 
quite a following. Um, but his cartoons don't get viewed as much these days as Looney Tunes. Now let's talk about limited animation. Basically what limited animation is, is your, your scene, whether it's your character or part of the background or whatever, are created in separate, separate sections, um, or as you would know through the computer, something like Photoshop or Illustrator, layers. And they're created on different layers, and then we can animate different pieces. You see, what happened was, back when um, theatrical shorts started dying and television became popular, the cartoons weren't being shown in theaters. People were moving to um, watching television. Hanna-Barbera left MGM and created their own company. Now, everybody was experimenting with limited animation at the time. And limited animation was a way to save money. They were able to create um, you know, characters or just, like I said, scenes and not have to redraw, re-ink, recolor everything over and over again. For example, you can have a section of a character, but his arms could be removed, and that cat and that character can stay on the screen, and we just reanimate the arm moving. Now, this was used because the budget for television animation was not the same for for theatrical shorts, so they had to find a way to save money. Now, a lot of people were experimenting with the idea of limited animation or movement. Hanna-Barbera did not invent the technique. What will people give them credit for is perfecting the technique. Now, I'm a big Hanna-Barbera fan. I love all the characters in there, the Flintstones, there's Yogi, there's Huckleberry Hound. Um, these were cartoons that still run to today. And the way these cartoons were made became the standard mold for how television animation happened for all the years to come. We still work that way for a lot of cartoons. Now, whether we computer animate them or still animate by hand, that's really up to the company, but the idea, the process is the same. So let's take a look at what a break is. Now, these designs here were created by Ed Benedict, who was, an, who was a, a character designer for Hanna-Barbera. Uh, one of my favorite character designers. He had this beautiful way of creating simplistic work and making it look beautiful. Now, what a break is, is a section of a character or a background or a, a piece that can be moved. So, if we look here, and we look at, let's take a look at Fred's mouth. Do you notice how there is this tip from the corner of his eye down to his clothing, which that, that very light line there shows kind of his, his five o'clock shadow? Well, in a profile view such as this, we can keep everything except that line and his mouth. We can animate that, and by pushing and pulling on that, on that line um, that's on the eye, we can create what would look like a cheek movement. And when we say different words, when we pronounce different words, our cheeks uh, squash and stretch, and we can get that reaction and that illusion by moving that line and keeping it simple. You'll also notice the line where Fred's sleeve is. It's that little like zigzag there. That is a great piece to have because we can draw everything on the character except his arm. We leave that little line and that tells us where his shoulder is. And now we can animate the arm. And we can do the same thing for his legs based on how the bottom of his loincloth goes. Um, Now you'll notice this isn't the original, uh, the the final version of Fred. This was one of the original concepts, and I always like looking at at these pieces. They are, you know, really, really just amazing to look at the simplicity and the beauty of these lines, um, how the character was developed. 
That's why I put both images side by side for you to see. Now, if we look, this wasn't the actual name of the show, Yogi Bear and Friends. Yogi had a bunch of shows. Actually, he started on the Huckleberry Hound show. Um, was so popular, he spun off his own series. Um, but I just put Yogi Bear's Friends as the title. Um, you know, if we go from uh, left to right on the screen, we have Snagglepuss. We got Top Cat, Huckleberry Hound. In the back row, there's Ranger Smith coming forward with Boo Boo Bear to Yogi Bear to Super Snooper to Blabber in the front up to Quick Draw McGraw. And then at the end, we have Augie Doggy and Daddy Doggy. If we look at these characters, we see the breaks specifically at the head. Every one of them has some kind of collar on. Uh, Quick Draw has his neckerchief. Um, Daddy Doggy has his, his dog collar. Augie wears a shirt. Boo Boo. Yogi, Huck, and Ranger, and Snagglepuss all, all wear ties. And uh, Top Cat, his head is a solid line over his neck. And with uh, Super Snooper and Blabber, they have their trench coat. This made life a lot easier for animators because they can draw the entire body and remove at those breaks. Now this was continued to th throughout today. Um, I'm just going back to the Flintstones in this one here because I'm gonna draw a character very similar to the Flintstones that we're gonna use to create for limited animation. So if we look here, everyone has some kind of collar, right? For Wilma and Betty, they have necklaces. Fred and Barney, it's their jackets. I'm not jackets, they're their top of their clothes. Uh, Dino has his, his collar. Pebbles and Bam Bam heads go over their necks. And we still use this today. And here are some cartoons, some of the last cartoons Hanna-Barbera produced. Hanna-Barbera technically hasn't been Hanna-Barbera since, if I remember the date, late, late 50s. Uh, maybe early 60s. The name Hanna-Barbera has always been around, but they were always owned by someone else. And in the in the late 90s, I want to say, mid to late 90s, they were bought out by Turner. And Turner owned them and hooked up uh, and started Cartoon Network. And basically they were producing new cartoons. Uh, eventually, Turner sold their work to Warner Brothers, and in I want to say 2001. I don't 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 quote me on the date. Hanna Barbera officially closed their doors, and um, and Warner Brothers took over and eventually started taking over their characters. So now, anything that comes out Hanna Barbera character wise is actually a Warner Brothers production, but they still use this style of animation. We can see the breaks quite easily on these characters now. And if we move on, here's some present day characters that keep the same feel. Now Gravity Falls is one of my uh, favorite cartoons, but we can see how these characters are created in a way that these breaks really help them out. Take a look and study some of these characters. Look at the characters that you're drawing. Look at the characters on television that you like or in the movies, even video games. How are they created? The majority of them are going to be created with very noticeable breaks if you know what you're looking for. This way it makes the life easier for the animator and for anyone working on it. So why don't we move on to starting to design the character. You can watch me develop the character and we'll, we'll move on from there. Thanks.